Hi guys. This is coming from uh, Gallup, and it's pretty decent. I haven't read anything from Gallup. I, I believe at least half of of U.S. continue to say the government is an immediate threat. By Frank Newport, Gallup.com poll. You have you know you get the idea. Serial number. Half continue to say government is immediate threat. Um, this is a story highlights. Forty nine percent of everyone surveyed, or relatively the sample, or population of the U.S. I'm not even sure what's this is listed, but say government poses immediate threat to rights and freedoms. Republicans are more likely to see uh, government as a threat, and Americans give very diverse explanation of their views of these views. Coming out of Princeton, New Jersey, almost half, 49% of America say the federal government poses an immediate threat to the rights and freedoms of ordinary citizens similar to what was found in previous surveys conducted over the last five years. When this question was first asked in 2003, less than a third held this attitude. So this is by percentage. 2003, 30%. 2011, 49%. And it's kind of back up and around 49 plus. In a September 8th through 10th, 2013, May 20th through 21, 2013 poll shows polls, questions, was asked and of half the sample. Okay. So I don't know why they're not saying 50%. I'm not even positive. But I imagine that's what it is. Uh, these results are Gallup 7, September 9 through 13th government poll. The lower percentage of Americans agreeing in 2003 federal government posed an immediate threat. Likely reflected more positive attitudes about government evident after 9-11 terror attacks. And the percentage gradually increased to 44% in 2006 then reached the 46 to 49 percent range in four surveys conducted in 2010. Yeah, that happened after the uh, banks got all screwed up and they got all the bailouts and then the economy basically tanked. So the remarkable findings about these attitudes is much as they reflect apparently toward party controlling the White House rather than being a purely fundamental or fixed philosophical attitude toward government. Uh, I don't know why this is saying 49 and 49 when there's a 2% which are um, completely, you know, non-evident of. Because, you know, 50 and 50, 49 49, when you still have, you know, you still got 2% over here that nobody wants to talk about, but All right, so this is a percentage of viewing U.S. government as a threat by a political party. I found this to be actually pretty cool. Um, I, I'm, I'm a statistics geek. That's just what I am. Republicans are red. Democrats are um, yellow or green, whatever this is. I believe it's a green. So in 2000, roughly 2007, Democrats believe that the government was a threat, and that dropped in 2011 to the lowest numbers, and again in 2013, and starting to pick up again in 2015. While the same happened to Republicans, Repu Republicans in 2004, when this was taken, didn't really care. They didn't care to 2007. Look what happened right here, 2007-2008, was that um, was the bubble collapse. Um, that's when the uh, uh, what do you call it? That's when we had to um, help the bankers out and everything. And that's when that's when the Republicans went, holy crap, what happened? And now they're up to 63, 64 percent in 2013. 64 percent, I believe, it to be fixed in, 2013, in 2011, 2013. Uh, to 65 percent in... 2015, 65 and 32, you still don't get the whole number, but it's decent. So what's behind the belief the government is an immediate threat? Well, we know what it is. It's the failure to 
Here, you know what? I'm not even going to go into this. I'm going to tell you what it is. And let's, let's see if I'm right. Let's see if, if their version and my version match. The reason people believe the government is a threat because of their policies that are so clusterfucked that they don't allow anything to happen where it's their fault. Uh, good example of that. My nephew got hurt at school. His ankle swelled. He needed to pretty much be in a hospital. Okay? Uh, some kid pushed him down the stairs right through class. And, you know, he, they were all walking down a hall or a uh, staircase. And my nephew got hurt. He's not weak. He's not small. In fact, he's about as big as I am. And so he got hurt. The school was informed. School did nothing. In fact, when it came to their attention, it was my nephew's fault automatically. And they didn't give him any medical aid. They didn't contact the police on behalf of the uh, the kid doing it. They didn't contact EMS to get him to the hospital so that in case his leg was really messed up, it didn't do anything. They wouldn't have to amputate it. So anyways, so now the school's saying that it's his fault that the school has no liability in it, and they didn't even bother to bring in the police to talk with the family of the person who was involved. So what it is, if you didn't get my gist, is that it's their failure to understand the reality that they're given. Now, going back to what I said about the, the school, the school is not at fault for my nephew falling. The school is at fault for their blatant misunderstanding of the ideas and what happened afterward. Their negligence is what it is. They're not responsible for the school or for, for, for the fall down the stairs. They're responsible for not contacting EMS and getting him the proper medical care. They're responsible for my sister having to shovel out money when it should have fallen on their shoulders under some insurance agreement that school has with the local hospitals when something happens on their property. He had to go see a uh, an orthopedic surgeon. I, I still don't know if that happened or if that's still going to happen, but his leg is good now. He's up walking around. Um, he went to urgent care after he got back from the hospital and everything, and there's still a talk to go see a, um, an orthopedic surgeon so the only thing I'm going to say from what I know and I understand is that surgeons want to do what they want to do surgery so I don't think he's ever gonna go see that doctor but the idea behind this folks is that they don't want to accept their negligences and their mistakes and understand in the olden days, you had a broken arm, what happened? You went to the hospital. Problem solved. It happened on your thing, you drove, you know, you contacted EMS and you went to the hospital. You know, your buildings got bombed by the bankers. You went into JP Morgan with a SWAT team and you took care of those bastards one way or another. Uh, so anyways, overall Americans who agree with the government's immediate threat tends to respond with a very general complaint echoing the theme of the federal government's too big, too powerful, and that it has too many laws. Well, I disagree with that. Well, I don't disagree with it, but that kind of starts off. They also cite non-specific allegations that the government violates freedoms and liberty. Yeah, okay. Well, what I would say here, folks, is I would give the reasonings behind the way they handled the banks. They should have let them fall. They should have. They should have done Iceland did. Let them fall. Let them collapse, arrest the top guys, put them in prison, five, six years down the road, kick them back out to some country that doesn't give a shit about them. And that's it. So let's go back to this. So according to this, this is what they basically said, mentioning the percentage. Too many laws in government is too big in general, held at 19%. Violation of freedoms and liberties, 15%. Gun control violation, Second Amendment 12. So they're only doing this by proxy call. This is all the proxy uh, situations. They're not even doing it by the real situations. But police and law, law enforcement are too violent. 
and arrest too many people, etc. I did that one in eight percent a couple weeks ago. Government surveillance, citizens' emails, phone records for I believe that to be like fourteen percent. Um, so I'm not going to read the rest of this because I don't like the way they're stacking this last half of it. Um, I would actually do this on the basis of what happened in their handling of the situations, not necessarily their policies to date, because their policies can change six times in two weeks. Policies don't mean shit. It's how you handle the policies. So thank you.